Hi, I'm Varian Brandon, and I am a stranded color work designer here, and I don't think I've said this in a while, here in the beautiful mountains of North Carolina, Western North Carolina. And today we're going to talk about, this is more of the, um, if you've seen the opening, it is going to be more of the design decisions kind of grouping in that category. Um, it is, I have a Kleenex in my hand, sorry. Um, it is um, why I have different playlists for different you know, different types of, of discussions. I don't know why, why I can't just have one and talk about lots of things. I don't know that either, but this is the way it is. So let's move on. <laughs> anyway, today we're gonna talk about hats, and especially if you saw in the opening. Um, I have designed a number of hats. I, I, more than, I was collecting them all and thinking, and I don't even have them all, which is kind of interesting. I think for the same reason people knit hats, I mean, you knit hats, is because they're a small project you can do a bunch of stuff with um, and, but you, you're not knitting a big, huge sweater, a big, huge coat like this thing back here. But they go relatively quickly, but they're fun. They're fun little things. And since I do stranded color work, it's fun to see how many different ways I can get the stranded color work into the, the can, onto the canvas, if you will, of, of the hat. And I have several different canvi, I don't think that's the right plural, anyway, canvases, <laughs> silhouettes of hats that I have used through the years, I mean, lots of years. Um, we're gonna, I've got a couple of them in my lap here, and then we're going to go to the other camera and we're going to talk about, um, we'll look at them individually and, and also talk about some of the design features, if you will, or, or uses of color in the, um, you know, the hat, in, on the canvas of the hat itself, okay? So, um, all right, well, let's just start, let's start with this one. Um, some of these I've only made one of. This is one of them. <laughs> I've only made one TAM. This is the top of the TAM. This is called Mialica. Um, and we'll talk about it later, but it, and, and why it's called, let's just wait till later why it's called that, but it has a, a nice broad um, brim on this sort of tam that is lined so that it's warmer. I, I really like having the double thickness around the ears because it really, it's kind of like wearing a headband and a hat all at the same time like this. And um, I promise you, I will put these on later, but I'll wait to mess my hair up. Um, it has a little blip on the top which we'll talk about later too anyway anyway that's my alka that's the ham the the tam the ham the tam version um which is i said i haven't done too many of um the other one that i started with i haven't got this one is um one like this which is more like a kind of an exaggerated pillbox if you will um it has a top on it that we will it's flat like that but it also has the double thickness um, around, hello, double thickness around the, the body. This part of it is all double thickness. It's not double knitting, it's just double thickness in here. Um, I use this one to teach with a lot and I will talk to you about that one later. That one is called Espen. Um, um, then I have, um, this one I've only done one of. This was done for a class. Somebody suggested that they might like, if I was teaching Fair Isle, it might be kind of interesting to do a. a a um, pattern that had a bunch of different, like a sampler, if you will, a bunch of different Fair Isle, uh, real traditional Fair Isle motifs. And this one's called Elfish because it has, I don't know, it looks like an elf, elf sat. Um, but it has, and we'll look at that one a little bit later too. Um, here is the one I've made a, most everything of. I don't know what the style is called. Um, sometimes I'll call it a bucket, but that doesn't seem like you wearing a bucket on your head sounds really weird, but anyway. Um, it is, and mostly because there is no, there's no um, shaping in this whatsoever. It is just a straight tube, and then there is a uh, a finishing off at the top flat, much like you would a tam. So this is kind or tam beret. This is kind of, I mean, the the circumference is different, but it's the same kind of thing where um, you you make a complete flat top. Um, this one is done with central double decreases like you would if you had a TAM. Um, but it's a great opportunity to put design kind of in the top like that. Um, I forget. Well, I'll have to look up and see what the name of that one is. And then this is the one I've been working on mostly um, that I really kind of love to do. Um, is It's my new thing I'm experimenting with. Is this um, my version of 
one of the versions, I thought it was the, but I guess it's not, of a um, Fair Isle Kep, which is, I think, just the, the Shetland word for, or the, yeah, the Shetland word for um, hat, cap, Kep, cap. Um, but this one is a long-ish, kind of like the other ones that are have, have the long kind of hanging down parts in the back. Um, I like this one because it has the ribbing is in here and then this piece folds up and once again you have that double thickness around your ears and the ribbing helps keep it on even more so all right with that let's move on to the other camera um, and we'll walk through some of these um, specifically I will try it there's a lot of over there I will try not to make this too long <laughs> we'll go pretty quickly um, but I also will try to put the names up in the in the top so if you have any questions about how anything was done or 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 what the name of that one was. Um, I'll try to put the name of the, the, um, the, like, must, much, blah, blah, much like I, can I talk? Much like I did the cowls with an early, in the earlier um, sort of version of this kind of video. Okay, so let's go over to the other camera. Can I say that again? Let's go over to the other camera and look and see um, these a little bit closer. <laughs> Thanks. All right, let's start with this one. This is a very early one. This one is called By Gosh, By Golly, because it is mistletoe and holly. And if you know that old Christmas song, um, I think it was Burl Ives that did that, but you know, I will refrain from singing it for you. But anyway, the lyrics of the song was, oh by gosh, by golly, it's mistletoe and holly. So that's what this is. This is one of the ones that I was telling you, which is got a flat top. And it is, I mean, this is, I was trying to make not to have any sort of indication at all of there being any sort of decreases. Now the decreases are spread out and kind of staggered around so that it's pretty flat across the top. As I said, it's one of the first ones I did and I've continued to do with a little bit of a nubbin on the top, like, like the old felt um, berets. Um, but they're, I guess they're not old, but they're, it's an older design. But this also has, um, been totally lined and so what I did with this is I started I think I started here and knitted this way and then did a, um, a pearl uh, turning round and then did this and then did another pearl turning round here and then did the top part and then came back in and whipped this in on the inside so it's a nice little it's a nice little hat. It keeps your head your ears warm. Let's do it that way. Um, and let's go with well let's we'll continue with in that manner. Um, this one, as I said, is um, that same sort of hat is one I used to teach with. This one is called um, you can see I always I seem to turn around right at the 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 end of the round. This one is um, a real easy. It's one I like to teach with because of the real simple pattern here. But what I do is usually start people off uh, where they cast on a number of stitches and then knit. In this case, I think that's only like three rounds, um, three to five rounds. And I'll show you some more like this where you knit three to five rounds. Come here, do your turning round. And then you've got something to hold on to. It seems to for people who are starting stranded work, it's kind of easier when you're not just starting right off the cast on uh, to do stranded work. So you you. The first one you do is with the cat, the color you cast on with and one other color, and then you leave that one and start it. Start with another color, and then you're into the the stranded work itself. And we talk about the the OXO patterning of traditional stranded work, and then you have another set of those little checkerboards, and then another one, and then here is the same kind of thing. Um, I don't even think I did a turning round here, but you just did these staggered um, this staggered. Um, decreases to form the flat top and in these I started putting a little design in the top a little you know nubbin with a color on it and then you come back and pick up along your cast on round row right here those those little that chain stitch around the top of your cast on with a long tail cast on and then knit this way and um, I knit this with the accent color because you've got a whole skein of this in this case yellow um, that you don't use a lot of and so this is a way to use you know, use the rest of it up and then reach the top. I did the um, little Zim Alice Zimmerman little trick of the last round being the same color as the base here and then whip that in so it kind of just disappears um, on the inside. So that's called Espen, E-S-P-E-N. Um, another version not with five colors, same kind of thing. This time 
their little um, purl stitches on um, the second round of the two and two color here and that gives you a little more of a um, same thing kind of in here gives you a little texture here I think I did this one yeah probably did pick that one did that many stitches and then pick this up and did some more on the inside same kind of construction um, if I had you know if I was really good I would have done this in the smaller needle so it wouldn't buckle up like this but when you put it on it all stretches out but it's really warm kind of hat like that um, then this is the last one I did a class where um, they got to pick which colors they want to and they knitted all of it the same hat but they knitted um, I had picked some sort of color combinations this was one that nobody chose I wonder why it's a little bright a little weird looking I think but anyway same kind of motif same sort of deal the whole thing with the stuff in the top that way um, the other thing about that class is that if you don't want to knit the full hat you can actually knit the headband a headband so if you'll notice that this OXO patterning let's uh, do this one just because those colors are bugging me um, this is the same as this this pattern up here is the same as this up here you choose one and you can make a headband which are really nice in this case I was running out of the brown there's this stash yarn and did that on the inside oh and I did the same kind of thing on the inside kind of in here which um, these are great to take um, when you're going someplace when you know you're gonna be a little bit cold but you don't want to take a full hat you can just take that and these go around your ears and they're just really nice somebody um, oh, let's do this another another um, version of that same kind of headband I think this designs a little different on the inside but the same kind of you know headband kind of thing I love I've taken this on trips before I like that one um, and then somebody asked me if I would do a um, fingering weight version this was the color rate colors I have it's a little mushy but you can kind of see um, and instead of doing two I had to do three because it is it is um, fingering weight and instead of doing the double thickness uh, for the fingering weight I did just to be different a corrugated rib for people to um, to do so there's that again that's Espen um, then let's go with the um, well let's go back to the Tam the early early Tam that I did this is um, some yarn I got from this is still this elemental effects yarn that I use a lot of and um, this was just uh, probably every color she had <laughs> just about I bet but this was um, a nice thing I was looking it's called Mayalika because I was looking for designs to um, kind of um, transform into um, knitting and that would be designed for a circle so I went to the Mialica or Majalica as I said um, plates and that's what that is and it was I thought about that because so many times these tams like this are blocked on a plate so um, these colors just for the if you've noticed that there's more than two colors per round this is all done in duplicate stitch all of that here and these around here and I think um, I think those are the only two places here and here and, and up here where I just added um, just a little bit more you know because that's that's part of the thing anyway just a little more color just to kind of you know make it kind of work a little bit better um, and so that's this this one these also have mitts that go with them um, so that um, they have real traditional kind of mitts with a shaped peasant thumb um, this is all shaping in here for that and uh, and the same um, design that's on the the border of the hat is on the border kind of with the coloring just a little bit different oh no excuse me it's the one up here um, so you see this and that I put on the, the hat on the mittens and as I said that's Mayalica um, let's go with the other pattern um, this is one I was showing you this is I think Canoogle Lake Inn I think is what this one's called this is a bucket just a plain old just straight no um, no um, shaping whatsoever even here I think I use smaller needles for the rib it's a little bit of a corrugated rib and very straight bucket kind of thing and then here are um, here is the top as I said that looks that has the same sort of function as the top of a tam where you can have now a round sort of patterning you do do these little pie shapes 
things uh, with central double decreases. You can see them kind of in here. Central double decreases that form, that make this uh, the top here. And I love using that. So here is, um, here is one that I did that turned into more of a beanie uh, type thing, which I didn't like. This one's called um, Frenze Capo <laughs> because it's based on a scarf that my mother got in Florence many years ago not exactly the same colors and that's that's a a um uh, an idea that i think i just matched them as best i could this is jameson and smith yarn um but i it, years later remade it and made one more level higher so that it could serve as a um as a slouch hat but as i said this is florenze capo florenze meaning being florence just fun to say um being florence and um, capo being cap, being on the top of the thing. So yeah, the, the tops are pretty much the same. So you've got, you've got those. I like the red and white checkered, um, checkered, you know, the red and white, what is it, candy cane kind of looking thing. That also has the extra little um, nubbins of pearls right there just to give it a little bit more texture. Um, another one from that same line. I wanted to do one, um, oh, here, this, um, I should have shown that. Where is it here? This one is, um, this is the uh, Canoe Lake in, in, in a fingering weight. This is the same hat in um, DK weight. It's just, um, it's not the same gauge at all, but just to show you same kind of thing, same bucket kind of top kind of here and just the different ways, different colors, different scales of yarn. Um, different weights of yarn, I guess I should say. Um, what I wanted to do was to do a hat that was asymmetrical. I kind of wanted to do, it was the beginning of my sort of asymmetrical phase. And so this was another one of the bucket hats. It has some of those same, I call those the commas, um, that if I've used before. It's kind of a nice asymmetrical patterning. It is, um, and so I was trying to do these swirly things. I called it the swirly hat. That was the working title for this because you can see the sort of swirls that go on kind of in here. The problem was is that this was a really long hat. <laughs> it just it was a little too long for what I was looking for. So I redid it um, in different yarn and um, this is actually now called Unbroken because um, this yarn, these things here are kind of Baroque-esque if you will sort of little Baroque kind of swirls and swishes things. So, and it's made it totally in the round, so it would make, an, make it unbroken, but because it's Baroque, it's unbroken. Ha ha, isn't that fun? <laughs> anyway, this is the top of this hat, which is, um, this is uh, all the curly cues around the top here. Okay, um, that last one reminded me of this one. I did a coat. Um, and I'll try to insert, let's see, let's leave it this way. I'm going to put a, right there, I'm going to put a picture of the coat itself. Um, and this was the hat that went along with the coat. Um, had the same sort of colors, the same sort of um, motifs, um, but just on a smaller scale. But the same kind of thing that you have in sort of the silhouette, the canvas, if you will. Um, just a bucket kind of thing like this. This one doesn't have a rib on the edge. I think the other ones had all had ribbing on the edge. This just has a little bit of patterning on the inside. Um, I forgot it was there. That was a surprise. <laughs> it was patterning on the inside. That was just a little hem turned over so that it doesn't curl. But as I said, the same sort of motifs. And then the top of that, again, is I got, got really into these little swirly thingies around the top which makes them kind of fun to do okay that's the Aryan that's the Aryan hat um, and the last of this crowd yeah the last of this this particular type is this one that's called the ivy crown and I was to say I was doing everything that was sort of asymmetrical unlike the the um, let's see if I can put my hand on one I've got a big stack over here something unlike the traditional fair isle patterns which are the OXO let me show you one that Okay, yeah, the OXO patterning, which is very symmetrical this way and that way. 
again, every time you say those words, you have to do those hand signals, um, horizontally and vertically. Anyway, sorry, um, OXO patterning. That's very traditional fair aisle type motifs. I was trying to get away from that and was doing things that were not symmetrical. So here are, um, this one is called, as I said, the ivy crown because it has bits of ivy that are not symmetrical at all in there. It also has a turn uh, inside um, hem this way. It's one of the, another one of these slouch kind of bucket hats. The top of it has a bit of the ivy, ivy bits as it goes around like that. And when you wear these, and I'll show you in just a minute how, how that kind of shows off. Again, it has a little nubbin thing at the top like that. All right, the latest ones I'm kind of, oh, I forgot this one. Let's, well, I've got two more over here before I get to the latest one I'm working on. Get out of here, Cable. Um, is This is this uh, Elfin one, and it's it's real fair. Speaking of fair isle um, motifs, have I got this? That's right, okay. Um, I start off with a with a hem here to kind of go, uh, kind of give you a little bit of oomph here, kind of go around your ears. There, there, there here's your OXO patterning, and as you go along, you keep up and get into little border patterns and little tiny little um, OXO patterns up here all the way to the end where you've got um, sort of patterns as they go along. And then you have this wonderful um, pom-pom at the end. And people keep asking me how I do this pom-pom. This pom-pom originally was probably that big and I just kept trimming it down until it kind of looked like that, <laughs> which is kind of, kind of interesting. It's like a felt ball, but it's not. It's actually, you know, yarn in there. Um, but anyway, that's Elfin, and then that's an old pattern. And then here's one that um, has mitts. I'll show you those in just a minute. Um, this one is called um, I think this was Tegela. This is the top of Tegela. I think that's right. I may. I think that's right. <laughs> I'll put the name up there. If it's, it's not Tegela, it's something else. I'll put it up there. Very hard to find names for things, but that's the top of of that one. This one is made out of. Um, Zilana Air, and it is the softest, lightest. It's like, it's just so light, and um, it's unbelievably how light and soft this is. Um, but this one, I had a limited amount of time, well, first of all, and a limited amount of um, yarn to use. Um, this one was made in, I think I got the ask, ask on a Thursday, I got the yarn on a Friday, and by the not the following Tuesday, but the Tuesday after that, the pattern was written, um, the sample made and the pattern written and everything and printed out. And um, I was off to a trade show where we were putting, having it um, in a special thing. This was at TNNA. So that's this one. Um, and then they asked me later to do mitts to go along with it. Of course, the mitts took three or four months. The hat took like 10 days, but, <laughs> and, um, but the, those are the mitts that, that go with it. So I, I think it's Tegela, I'll put the name there. But the one I'm kind of working on right now, this one is called, this one doesn't have a name yet, but it is my take on, on the silhouette of a traditional Fair Isle, one of the traditional Fair Isle type caps, fisherman's caps, that has, as I think I showed you, the, the uh, ribbing here. And what you do is you start this like that and work this way and then turn it inside out and um, with your stitches and work then the rest of the hat that way. And then when you get through, you do, you do that. This has no purling in it whatsoever. I do, don't see why this is not curling, but I think the fact that it just gets worn stretched out like this the entire time, I did, I did steam block it. I mean, that's what I did, but um, it goes all the way up, all the way up here. You can see the, the OXO where the X is so, it's just these two blips um, at the top, kind of here. And then my favorite part is, I always love the tassels. My favorite part is the tassel. So that's that, as I said, that doesn't have a name yet because I'm working to write that one up. And then I'm also working on another one in that style here. This is what I was telling you. You start this way, and I started this way and worked to here, then turned it inside out, 
picked up and didn't pick up any stitches but kept on going that in the in the um, tradition of the the uh, inside part being whatever your accent color is because you're not using much of it you might as well use the rest of the ball up like that this is kind of where I am here um, again with the little commas I don't know why you think I was an English major or something I was not so that's where you are I've still got to do the rest of that and I think that's about it okay with all that done, close-up work done, now it's time to mess up my hair, okay? Because I, I promised you I'd show you how these things kind of look on. So let's start with the oldest one. I have several examples in my hat, in my pocket, in my, what's this called? Lap, in my lap. All right, this is the By Gosh, By Golly that I showed you. This is the one that is kind of like um, a big pillbox or something. It has the double thickness here. So headbands coming off, no... Um, whatever for the hair. I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. Anyway, this goes on like this. Like you can wear it up kind of like that. To me, it kind of looks kind of, I don't know, Russian or something, you know, like that. Or you can pull it down so that it fits in. And it's, it's, it's really warm over the ears like that. And then you can grab a little nub in at the top and pull it off. Isn't that cool? All right, here, behave yourself. Okay, now, here is one of these um, big bucket ones. Yeah, here's one of these big bucket ones. This is the unbroken one that has, um, that is kind of a, a, a slouch. So this goes, <laughs> putting it on is so much fun. It goes this way and you pull it back down like that. It's now over your ears. You have a little space out here so that you're, it's not tight up. See if this was a, this was a beanie. I've done this so many times. If this was a beanie, it'd look like that. But this is a slouch, so it kind of has a little bit of width at the top. And then, if I can turn around, you can kind of, oh, now I've lost everything in my lap. Okay, you can kind of see um, the, this part of it. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, now let's get the stuff I just dropped on the floor, hit the camera, do everything, it's only just great. Okay, off with that. Um, this is, that's the one that has the ribbing at the edge, around the edge. This is the one that has, this is the ivy crown. This is the version that has the, if I can find, there it is, uh, that has the, um, just the hem. I should show you that first, should, shouldn't I? That just has the hem around the edge like that. This comes on, oh, same kind of thing like this. And you have that, like that, okay? which is good. All right, now, um, the other version of the, um, I should have shown this next, the other version that, you, that, that I showed you that had the um, headband, um, yeah, that had the headband um, option. So here's the headband. This goes on, um, I usually don't put it underneath my hair because it, come, it comes off when I do that. I just put it like I'm putting on a hat. And that's kind of, you know, kind of nice like that you have if you can get your hair right and everything okay see that's kind of nice keeps it really does keep your ears warm so there's that um here is the the two of the two um the oldest one which is this one this um elfin which i love because it's fun to wear it's very festive I seem to have a, a a spare piece of yarn right there so just ignore that Let's put that over there just ignore that Okay, so that's this one, because you can kind of go around. The trick with this one is because there is that whole, this is weighty. This is made out of worsted weight yarn. I think it was worsted weight, I think so. Maybe maybe DK, but I think it may be worsted weight. You have to really get your gauge that you don't, this, you don't make this too heavy, otherwise it's just gonna pull off your head. So, um, but that's cool. Yeah, forget the hair. And then this is my, the one I love so much, which is my new my new obsession here, is the um, this one that has the the same kind of feel to it, but not quite as heavy. This is this is fingering weight wool, and it has this on the ends like that. I always say it's it's so much fun to say yes and no with this one. <laughs> you can be you know just flip it around. It's just fun. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Um, okay, so that is, those are the hats um, of different kinds of things you can do with hats and different, um, different options with them. Nothing really fancy as far as construction goes because my job, let's see if I can make this hair look, oh, just forget the hair. Um, uh, the, okay, calm down. 
nothing really fancy when it comes to construction as much but because what I'm trying to do is get stranded color work pattern using it as a canvas if you will so okay if you have any questions <laughs> please feel free to get in touch um, you can you can see um, I'll put well I'll put my email in the notes uh, for anybody who wants to ask any questions so thanks guys for indulging me in this trip down a little bit of trip down memory lane with all of the hats so um, I will see you next time when I'm not sure but we'll get there uh, <laughs> all right thank you so 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 much for joining me and um, as a, again if you've got any questions about anything stranded let me know um, thanks guys <laughs> bye bye